In this video and the next, I'm going to talk about some common design and interpretation problems. There are lots of potential problems that are specific to a given research area, but I'm going to talk about problems that I often see across multiple research areas. Let's start with a common design problem, physical stimulus confounds. This is where the researcher is comparing two or more conditions in an attempt to study a psychological process, but there's also a difference in physical stimuli between the conditions. For example, imagine that someone did an N2PC experiment and they were interested in implicit learning, so they had the target occur on the left side on 60% of trials and on the right side on the remaining 40%. You might expect to see a shorter N2PC latency for left side targets than for right side targets. The problem here is that rather than fixating the center of the display, subjects might shift their gaze to the left side of the display before the stimuli appear. As a result, most of the stimuli will be in the right visual field which would give you a lateralized ERP. It would be hard to tell the difference between the sensory lateralization and the N2PC. So we need to make sure that subjects keep their eyes on the fixation point or we end up with a physical stimulus confound. Here's another physical stimulus confound. This is actually the experiment where I originally discovered the N2PC when I was in grad school, back when I had more hair. The target was the triangle with the horizontal line and subjects pressed one of two buttons to indicate whether the target was present or absent. The problem with this design is that the contralateral and ipsilateral sides of the display were physically different. The contra side had a horizontal line and the ipsy side didn't. This might have been responsible for the contralateral negativity that I saw from 200 to 300 milliseconds. We later ruled out that possibility, but it was a flaw in the original design. Now we typically use this kind of design. We have a red item on one side and a green item on the other. Subjects are instructed to attend to the red item for some trial blocks and to the green item for others. The stimulus positions vary randomly from trial to trial, so subjects can't predict which side will contain the target before the array is presented. This design allows us to compare the same physical stimuli while varying whether the subject is attending to the left side or the right side. For this array, subjects will shift their attention to the left side in the attend red blocks and to the right side in the attend green blocks. Same stimulus, but different directions of attention. Then we look at the data contralateral versus ipsilateral to the attended side collapsed across a 10 red and a 10 green blocks. This allows us to be sure that the difference in voltage between contra and ipsy electrodes reflects the side being attended, not a difference in the physical stimuli between the two sides. This exemplifies an important rule. To avoid physical stimulus confounds, use identical stimuli across conditions and vary only the task instructions. I call this the Hilliard principle because it was drilled into me when I was a grad student in Steve Hilliard's lab back in a previous century. Steve was incredibly careful about experimental design, and as a result, he made huge scientific contributions using ERPs. Not every study can follow the Hilliard principle. For example, language studies usually need to compare physically different words. You can't instruct a subject to treat cat as a noun in one block of trials and as an adjective in another block. When a study doesn't follow the Hilliard principle, you should think carefully about whether the physical stimulus differences might be responsible for the results. The early ERP components are particularly sensitive to small physical stimulus differences, so be particularly concerned about effects within the first two or three hundred milliseconds. Now let's move to another common design problem, failing to isolate the ERP component of interest. And let's consider an example. Remember the N400 component? Stimuli that are semantically incongruous with a previously established semantic context elicit a large N400. So the last word in I take my coffee with cream and sugar doesn't produce much N400 because sugar fits semantically with the rest of the sentence. But if the last word is dog, you get a big N400. But is this a bigger N400 for a dog or a bigger P3 for sugar? We know from a mountain of research that it's actually a bigger N400 for a dog, but you wouldn't be able to tell this from the data shown here. So when you read an ERP paper and they say they're measuring some particular component, you need to think about whether they might actually be picking up on a different component that represents a very different neurocognitive process. 